Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's active worship on Wednesday, the 18th of November. We start, as always, by making the sign of the cross, just to remind ourselves that we are putting ourselves, even for this short while, in God's presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, hopefully, uh, your prayer board has the uh, NDCYS Word of the Week um, sort of uh, posters on. Um, if it hasn't been changed to uh, the Word of the Week this week, which is worship, uh, can you ask your tutor if you can do that for them? And maybe you could uh, sort of offer to do that uh, every sort of uh, time you are in form or even in a classroom where you see that it hasn't been changed, just to give your uh, teachers, myself included, uh, a reminder that we need to do that. Um, so like I said, uh, this week's word of the week is worship uh, and the Cambridge Dictionary defines worship as to have or show a strong feeling of respect and admiration for God. Now often, and I know myself included, that might be hard for us to understand as God is not a physical being. So how do we worship what isn't physical? Christians would say that through Jesus, the incarnation, which means that God is in human form, we can know what God is and therefore worship worship becomes a bit more doable, for want of a better word. And often we think that worship has to involve words, music, singing and prayer. Um, let's maybe call it razzmatazz. However, and while these things are important and many of us probably enjoy worshipping in that way, maybe there is a different way to respect and admire God. Uh, the short reading you are about to hear may give us an idea about how else we can worship God. And maybe the uh, picture there um, will give you a little bit of a clue for some of you who remember your sources of authority from your RE lessons. Now, uh, when I uh, read the top section, I would like you all please to join in by responding, glory to you, O Lord, uh, as it's a gospel reading. <clears throat> and then at the end, excuse me, um, you will all join in by saying praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. And this is known as the widow's offering. Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box, and he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all she had to live on the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think this is a really lovely, very, very short reading, but it was such a powerful one. And uh, the imagery uh, of the widow giving everything she had is, is, like I said, it's very powerful. And again, for those of you who are sort of currently sort of studying the Bible in year seven, year eight, um, and for those of you who've been through that, uh, you may remember that throughout the Bible, um, there are sort of moments where the plight of the widow is, is uh, often sort of mentioned. In the Old Testament, we hear the prophets berating the leaders for not supporting widows and orphans um, as they sort of formed uh, a great portion of the sort of the marginalised and the vulnerable. And knowing that uh, you can sort of understand that this historical legacy lends weight to the story of the widow's offering in Luke's gospel. It shows that despite being vulnerable, poor and ignored, she showed huge generosity and love. And so what I wanted you to think about today is how we can turn our generosity, how we can turn our love and our compassion for others, which on a a very regular basis many of you already do inside in, in school and out of school and to think about how we can sort of continue doing this now our mission statement uh, and the Delisle Way cards that hopefully you all have in your top pocket uh, despite the fact that I found a few on the floor or lying around school are reminders that we have a duty not just because we're in a Catholic school not just because we uh, are a school that has a, a faith and an ethos, but because we're human beings, that we have a responsibility to constantly look out for the other. You know, we, yes, we have to look after ourselves and we look after our friends and our family. And those things 
are on the whole um, quite easy. But Jesus is always asking us to go out of the way and to love the people that are not necessarily particularly lovable and to be kind to those people who have perhaps in their own way wronged us. And so the mission statement, our school mission statement, is hopefully reflected in an active way in the Delisle Way cards. And there's one particular bit uh, that I love in the explanation of the mission statement, which is the second bullet point. And it says, we make everything a living prayer. Now that takes uh, the idea of prayer and it turns it into action and it turns it into something that we can all do. And often when we struggle with the prayers, the normal prayers where we, we use words and we, we aim them towards God, many of many of us and like i said myself included might find that very difficult but i think most of us probably find it easier to do something kind and do something compassionate and give to charity and to look after those people and the delisle way card you know being a positive role model showing determination helping others making a difference prayerfulness respecting our community all of those things are ways that we can um, we can turn that uh, idea of a living prayer into reality and it, it can be done in all sorts of different ways. I've been holding uh, some chapel sessions with uh, some year nine classes and they've come up with some brilliant ideas about how in our day to day lives we can be positive role models, how we can make a difference. And they're not always the same, but it just shows that there there are different things that we might be able to do. And so my request to you and your request to us as your teachers is that we try and do that as often as we possibly can and do try and badger us uh, you know to sign your card if you think you've done something really really well and just remind us you know you know to, to kind of look out for sort of those positive things because we live such busy lives and we're always running kind of about you know obviously from classroom to classroom that we don't often have a sort of moment to stop and and notice those small little things that actually like it says on the right hand side there, make a big difference. And so we need to we need to try and get into a habit of, of of focusing on the positive things and we need to get into a habit of really sort of turning that into reality. So I'm just going to show you a, a lovely quote from uh, a, another very famous saint. And Mother Teresa says this, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Now, I've been at Delisle, I think, about nine years, and in my time at Delisle, I have seen countless students and countless members of staff do amazing, amazing things that might not always be particularly big, but they are done with love and they're done with that sense of wanting to support and look after those people who are who are vulnerable, who are sort of on the on the margins of society, whether it be supporting uh, CAFOD, whether it be supporting the, the Namibia uh, schools, uh, whether it be supporting local charities and food banks, um, all of those things are done uh, with great love. Like I said, over the last few months, the students and staff of Delisle have, like thousands around us, been struggling with the effects of the COVID crisis. But despite that, there have been many example of small acts, small examples of small acts done with great love. Uh, many of you uh, supported the poppy appeal and all the money that goes to the poppy appeal goes towards people who in their own way struggle with the effects of war either having been to war and come back having lost someone uh, during war um, and that can have a, a long long sort of term effect on those people so a massive thank you very much to the sick formers who went around and sold those poppies and then recently and this afternoon I, uh, I dropped off, or yesterday afternoon, um, I dropped off all the donations for the Equality Action Appeal, where they were going to turn those chickpeas and tomatoes and tin spinach into little uh, menu packs for people to use at home. And like I said, you know, at the moment there are many, many people who are struggling with uh, financial difficulties, not being able to afford um, the basics and relying on food banks for sustenance. And the chapel and the chaplaincy office were absolutely full of those things. And so a massive, massive thank you to all of you who brought food items down uh, or warm clothes 
um, Harvinder was really, really uh, chuffed, um, and you can see her outside the office in uh, down in Loughborough. And we'll continue, as always, to su support CAFOD because CAFOD do such brilliant work for the poorest of the poor around the world who, again, like us, are being affected by the COVID crisis. But that is on top of pre-existing problems such as poverty, such as drought, malnutrition, um, all of those sorts of things. So it's really important that we continue to, to look after ourselves, but also to look after our neighbour. So, as I said, let's keep it up because you guys do such a brilliant job. Um, you always have and you always will. Uh, and it fills, uh, I know it fills all of the adults in the school with great hope that at some point you'll be sort of taking our spots, but you'll be doing so with, with, with love and compassion uh, at the forefront of everything you do. Um, so what I'd like us to do now, um, we're not going to say uh, perhaps the normal sort of bidding prayers, because I think it's important that sometimes we do just spend time uh, in quiet reflection. Can I ask uh, everyone in your form to think about yourself at this at this moment, but to think about how you would like the atmosphere to be. Please, if there are uh, people around you, you know, or you may not know that need this time to sort of reflect and to pray to God, give them that sort of moment. Uh, don't giggle, don't laugh put your head down on the table, give yourself some quiet time because it's something so rare that we have in our lives. It's really important to take advantage of it when we are given that opportunity. So as you're quietly reflecting, remember your loved ones and offer your thoughts and prayers for them to God. If you know anybody who is suffering at the moment uh, because of loss of family or friends, or because of illness or loneliness or anxiety. And there will be many, many people in our forms, in our school who are suffering from those things. Again, let us ask God to offer them comfort. So just quietly, just either bow your head or have a look at the uh, video of the candles and we will uh, spend some time reflecting. So let's offer all of those people, all the things that we're worried and concerned about up to God. Now, I want to end on a, uh, on a lovely positive note. Um, and this is uh, on behalf of uh, our deputy head boy, uh, Luke. 
and his committee, the Student Engagement Committee, who organised a brilliant uh, competition uh, called In Harmony with Creation. And this was to create a, um, a mural that was going to go on the blank or now blank wall um, outside the uh, dining, dining hall. Um, and I'm going to read out uh, to you what Luke wanted to say. And so this is from Luke Hand, who is our deputy head boy. He says, thank you to everyone who handed in their designs for the In Harmony with Creation mural competition. In total, we received over 100 brilliant design entries, and it was wonderful to see them all laid out across several tables in the library. Keep an eye out for them on the school website. But congratulations have to go to Imogen Graham in 8C1, the winner of the competition. The design is symbolic and thought provoking, and we think it will look amazing on the canteen York courtyard wall. Many thanks, Luke. And I have to, and on behalf of uh, the other members of staff um, who were with Luke when we sort of looked at the entries, uh, Dr. Pye, Mr. McClone, Mrs. Portsmouth, um, the, the 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 quality of the entries was absolutely amazing. Uh, and like I said, the, the, the best ones, the runners up, will all be seen on the school website. You know, real attention and care to your skill and your, your, uh, your artistic sort of flair but also kind of very much uh, a reflection of that particular sort of uh, idea in harmony with creation. Again, a, a, an amazing, amazing idea, but again, one that is absolutely pertinent at the moment. You know, how else do we worship God? Well, you know, we worship God by looking after the environment, by trying to tread lightly and, and not cause unnecessary damage. Because often when we, when we, when we do, it's not just ourselves who are affected, but it is the poorest of the poor again. So well done to Imogen. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. And when it goes up on the, the wall outside, we'll be constantly reminded of our place within creation and therefore our responsibility to look after it. Um, so if you see Imogen around, give her a, a, a sort of a socially distanced pat on the back um, because she's done a brilliant job. So let's finish, uh, as always, by saying our college prayer. So may the Lord bless us and keep us. May he make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and grant us his peace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And let us finish by making the sign of the cross in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much everyone for listening. Uh, have a good day and thank you very much again for all your uh, donations to the Equality Action Appeal. Bye-bye.